So yeah, we are going to talk about first, um, you know, history uh, versus prehistory. I'll kind of go through and discuss like what is history exactly. And uh, of course, there's different definitions of what history is. Um, you know, you could say that, you know, history is um, everything in the past, but it's mostly a study of the past, like the study of, you know, human civilizations um, as a whole. And so we're, we're constantly studying different civilizations that have existed on the earth, going back to, I guess, the beginning of, I guess, the metal ages predominantly. Uh, of course, scientists also study uh, the, um, like the stone age and all that, like early humans as well. So history encompasses a lot of different topics. Uh, it's a mix of, you know, uh, culture, art, you know, um, the art of war, language, uh, customs, uh, pretty much anything you could think of can be kind of part of history uh, as a whole. So history is a wide ranging subject because you can, there can be a history of everything history to yourself and uh, history to different peoples and civilizations. Now, what is the origins of history? Uh, well, if you know about, uh, in fact, the word history, I kind of put that in there. It's a, it's a Greek word. I'll put it in here. Um, I guess I'll put it in the notes for you, but it does mean uh, inquiry is what it usually means in Greek, yeah, inquiry. Uh, inquiry would mean like to um, investigate or to know uh, about the past. That's primarily what, what historians are trying to do. And uh, one of the first, of course, you know, men that did that uh, was a man named Herodotus. You may have heard of him, uh, Herodotus. And um, I do you got a picture of him? Uh, I've got several pictures I can show you of Herodotus uh, that I've got. Let me see. Um, I'll show you one that I've got right here. It's, I got multiple pictures of him. Uh, of course, they call Herodotus, you know, the father of history. Uh, it was a, something that was coined by this uh, gr uh, Roman Roman poet uh, by, that went by the name Cicero. Cicero is the guy that kind of coined it. Uh, and uh, Herodotus, you know, uh, was one of the first to write down a series of books uh, about history. His books are called different names. Some people call them the histories of Herodotus, I think is the common name of what they'll usually call it. Uh, and then um, some people also call it the Persian Wars, history of the Persian Wars. And uh, they call it that because um, the fact that Herodotus who was a Greek historian around the fifth century BC, um, mostly wrote about the wars between the Greeks and the Persian Empire, which we'll talk about later uh, when we get to like Greek history and all that. So, um, so that's that's who basically Herodotus is, you know, primarily, uh, and uh, so he's the guy that started it. You know, other Greek writers, you know, came later, like the Cydides. Um, Plutarch, you may have heard of him, who was a pretty good Greek writer. Uh, so these guys were the guys that started it. The Romans copied, you know, uh, pretty much um, the Greeks in writing history. So so the Greeks and Romans were the ones that kind of started history, you know, uh, and all that. And then it kind of evolved from, from that, from there. All right. Then, the other, of course, the other thing I remember I had asked you about um, was like, you know, what is prehistory? Uh, you know, what they call prehistoric times. So prehistory um, is like the period before uh, civilization, before they had like, you know, real history uh, and all that. In fact, the word prehistory, uh, like pre means before and history means, you know, history. Um, but um, when does it begin? Well, that's the thing about history, you know, versus prehistory. Well, I think I think history itself starts about 3000 BC because that's when they started to have like written language uh, at the time. So anything before like 3000 BC is like the Stone Age in pre prehistoric times. 
There's, there's a lack of civilization. And um, yeah, prehistory, uh, if you know much about it, um, it relies a lot on on the sciences, like the science scientific fields. Uh, and um, I think there's like four key four key um, science scientific fields that are important uh, with prehistory, uh, which is like uh, I guess the first one would be geology, you know, studying the earth and minerals uh, and stuff like that. Uh, also paleontology saying animals, bones, and people's bones, and stuff, artifacts, stuff like that. Um, of course, anthropology, and also archaeology. So all those are sciences, scientific fields that are important, you know, uh, with prehistory, because without them, you know, we wouldn't really know much about the past, because there's a lack of written records. There's no language much, maybe some cave art or something like that. Uh, but that's basically why they rely on the sciences. Now, uh, the next thing we need to get into is we need to talk about uh, the early humans, uh, which developed uh, in Africa. Uh, the so-called, um, I people refer to them as the so-called um, hominids. Hominids is what they call um, human, like primates. The primates like us humans, and their ancestors, um, orangutans, gorillas, chimpanzee uh, are usually, of course, involved, uh, part of the hominids or hominins. And um, but we're mostly talking about our, our human ancestors uh, that go back, you know, several million years in Africa. Uh, why Africa? You know, why, why do the early humans develop in Africa? Uh, Africa was very warm climate especially around the equator. And so um, you study about like paleontology, um, studying about early humans. Uh, they found a lot of human fossils predominantly close to the equator, Kenya, Ethiopia, Tanzania, especially in the East Africa uh, area uh, for some reason. Um, an area called the um, Serengeti area and all that. You know much about that area, Serengeti Plain and so on. And so, um, so humans start there. Uh, oftentimes, you know, humans in Africa, they call that the cradle of humankind because uh, people started there. And then from there, humans then migrated uh, to Europe. Uh, they then um, Asia. And then more recently, in the last 10 to 15,000 years, humans eventually migrated through some kind of land bridge, um, like through where Siberia is. Alaska into what is, of course, the Americas. So, um, so that's basically how humans started and you know migrated uh, and all of that. Now um, we need to go ahead and talk about you know examples of um, some of the hominids, uh, like early ancestors of humans uh, that did exist. Uh, I do have um, some examples that I've got. I can show you that. I've got a lot of slides I kind of added for me to give to you. But um, got a kind of picture I've got it there of different humans uh, that you can see right there, kind of like blocking the way there. But uh, those are the bulk of the main ones uh, that are famous um, uh, hominids uh, that are well known. And um, Let's kind of go through them, but uh, real quick, and I'm, I'll show you other pictures. But Australopithecus, Homo habilis, uh, Homo erectus. Uh, and of course, these are Homo sapiens, which are all right here uh, over on the right. So I'm kind of going to be going through all these different ones that they have. I do have some pictures uh, to show you, uh, which I'll go down to the next one, which is right here. Of course, the one that is famous in the beginning, as you may have heard about, is uh, they call her Australop Australopithecus, which uh, of course, later they gave one of the first ones they found originally, which was named Lucy. I don't even heard about Lucy, uh, but Lucy was this early human 
that was found in East Africa, in northern Kenya. It was found in the 1970s by this, um, doc, uh, I think, paleontologist named uh, Donald Johansson. He and his team of paleontologists found, found, found her, which it is. And um, they believe that Lucy or Australopithecus uh, is a type of early human that mostly lived in East Africa, close to the equator. And um, the one they found, the first one they found, they think might be the oldest, um, dating back to three to four million years ago. Uh, they think Lucy, at least some of the older ones, because uh, I think Lucy was a child that might be 12, uh, they, they think. They think she might be three foot six, may have been her height. But they do think they use primitive tools, like early humans. They're not sure if they're meat eaters, probably not. And... Um, but Lucy is considered one of the first famous, um, you know, ones they have. And, um, of course, if you wonder about the name, like, why why, is, why was the, that first one found by Donald Johansson called Lucy? Well, apparently when they found her, uh, there was a Beatles song on the radio you may have heard of called Lucy in the Sky of Diamonds. And so the, the name stuck. So they called her Lucy. I guess they knew she was a girl. I don't know but. That's something they proved to be pretty much true about that. Uh, also, uh, so they had Lucy. Uh, then, of course, another, uh, of course, another human that was that way. Think I want to add, of course, is Homo habilis. I've never seen Homo habilis before. But Homo habilis, uh, you see on the screen. I don't know if I have to write it in because it's on the screen. But Homo habilis, of course, um, I'll write it in anyway because I want to write something in here. Homo habilis is called either handy or skilled man. I think you see up there, it's got handy man, but sometimes people would say skilled man. And uh, he's called that because of the fact that um, um, he was one of the first to use like tools, like especially stone tools, as far as they know. And uh, the only kind of tools they use were called what they call a pebble chopper or pebble choppers, I guess they'll call it, plural. Oops, let me take that one. Oh, it's messed that up. That should be pebble choppers. We can write that in right. Wrote the wrong word, but pebble choppers. And the pebble choppers were made uh, by um, taking like some kind of stone and striking it against pebbles, they think, to make an edge. That's how they think they made basically, uh, these early stone implements. Um, so they do think Homo habilis was some type of meat eater, uh, they believe. And um, you can see that's his skull. Uh, that's what they think he looked like. And you see it does start, it starts to look like more like early humans. Uh, the first paleontologist that found a Homo habilis was in the 1950s. A man named Louis Leakey found them believe in East Africa, close to Kenya and Ethiopia, actually in Tanzania. That's where he found, I think, the first one, they believe. And um, so Homo habilis is considered the first, you know, earliest Homo or human uh, that we actually have. So Homo habilis, skilled man or handyman. Uh, then they have, of course, um, another human I'll show you, uh, which is um, that one, of course, you're looking at is a Homo erectus. Uh, the one, a picture you're looking at, and I'll put it on the screen for you to see, is a Turkana boy. Uh, of course, Turkana boy is considered one of the most famous of uh, the Homo erectus skeletons ever found. Uh, it was found in the 1980s by Richard Leakey, by the way, a son of Louis Leakey. Uh, it was found in uh, Kenya, northern Kenya, and uh, Homo erectus is famous for a lot of things. Uh, in fact, they consider Homo erectus to be the first widespread human. Uh, the one thing he's famous for, he's the first major hunter-gatherer. The first major hunter-gatherer human. Uh, he was the first to basically, you know, hunt and gather food. And because of it, I guess him being nomadic and hunting different animals, eventually um, Homo erectus began to move 
from Africa into Europe and into Asia. I think they even found some remnants like of some skeletal remains of some of them living in, believe it or not, the Pacific Ocean, like in the western part. And um, I'm going to write this little about him. Uh, they believe he uh, was one of the first to use new kinds of tools. Like he's the one that they believe started developing what they call the stone hand axe. I don't know if you know what the stone hand axe is. Uh, the stone hand axe is a new kind of tool uh, that humans began to develop. I do have a picture of some stone hand axes, uh, which are right here. They would, how they would make a stone hand axe is that they would chip it away with something, stone, wood, you can see even an antler or something to make an edge. And they would use it in their hand, like to cut something up or use it as a weapon, uh, basically. And uh, they didn't really have any, you know, handle to put on it. So that's something that uh, Homo erectus was known for, of course, for doing. Uh, he also was one of the first to use fire as well and probably use spears as well. Uh, like, I don't know if you know much about the Addle Addle, what that is. You ever heard of Addle Addle? Uh, the Addle was a type of throwing spear uh, that a lot of early humans relied on uh, to try to kill game, basically. That's something I think he was one of the first to really experiment with. So, yeah, they were widespread. There's actually other versions of Homo erectus they have found. I don't have pictures of, of that, but like I'll give you two more. They have Peking Man. And also the other one, which I think is Java Man um, as well. Uh, those two are just famous examples of um, Homo erectus fossils that were found, I believe, in the 1800s, a little, little before uh, Homo uh, Turkana boy was found. Yeah, he was a boy. How old was Turkana boy? He was really young. He was only five foot three. I don't know if I wrote that down. He was a young boy, I know, probably a teenager, they believe. But uh, Peking Man was a um, some like a skull and some um, skeletal remains. It was found in the Yellow River Valley in China, I think around 1920. And then Java Man was found in the 1800s in the Pacific on the Isle of Java. So you had a case where somehow some of these humans began migrating eastward, like into Asia. I think Peking Man may have been in East Asia by like 1 million years ago or something like that. So so they were widespread. And uh, Homo erectus was pretty much like the dominant human like in the world at that point, somewhere around two to 300,000 years ago. All right. Um, oh, and then, of course, um, I'll go ahead and add, of course, another famous um, human I've got. Um, is the, um, I've got a picture here to show you of some of these other, they do have one called Homo heidelbergensis. I wouldn't worry about that one, but that's kind of some kind of early human that was kind of, they think, between Homo erectus. And of course, the one that's really famous, you know, uh, which is what they call Neanderthal man. You may have heard of Neanderthal uh, man. And um, yeah, Neanderthal man, is a um, type of uh, human that lived at uh, later, like at the end of the uh, Stone Age, also called Homo neanderthalensis, which you saw, of course, in that picture down here. That's his real name. People call it Neanderthal man, and uh, he's called that because uh, Neanderthal man was a type of early uh, human that was first found in Germany in the 1800s. Hundreds. Uh, in fact, a place called Neanderthal Valley, uh, or Neanderthal Germany, uh, they called it. And um, Neanderthals are famous. Uh, they peaked about 200,000 years ago, and uh, they're known for a lot of things. Of course, if you know about Neanderthal, man, they were also, uh, they were big game hunters uh, as well. They were famous for their um, large uh, skulls. Like their skulls are a lot bigger uh, than, you know, um, earlier, earlier, um, excuse me, later humans uh, or even earlier humans. And uh, I think the size of the Homo, um, Neanderthal skull is something like 14 to 16. Is it? Yeah. 
what was it? I think it was 14 to 1600 cubic centimeters, which is a little bit bigger than you know humans today. I think I've got a picture showing uh, added that that's good to, to show, kind of show the difference uh, between like the, you know, you got the, on the left, you've got the later humans, like modern humans today. And then you can see on the right, that's a Neanderthal uh, skull here. You can see uh, they have these heavy brow ridges. Their forehead was a little different uh, than later humans. Uh, their area nasal bones a lot larger. They suppose they have like larger noses. Uh, and then you can see the jaw, the chin is a lot different uh, than, than later humans. Uh, Neanderthals are known for being kind of stocky. You know, like maybe the average male, they have been like five foot six, maybe at the most. And yeah, they're, like I said, big game hunters. Uh, mostly they lived uh, predominantly uh, in um, mostly Europe and Southwest Asia. And they were around for quite a while, maybe 200,000 years, until eventually they went extinct. You know about that. Um, which there's all kinds of theories on why they went extinct. They, they went, they went uh, extinct, they think, uh, by at least, I'd say by maybe 50,000. Uh, actually, they think 30,000 B.C. I think they seem to think they may have been around until. What's the theories on what caused them to go extinct? Uh, there's two theories I've read about. One uh, is that um, they, they lived in smaller clans than later humans. That caused a lot of bad inbreeding, which led to their decline. Uh, and then, of course, they compete, had to compete with later humans, like you see on the left. And these are all like part of what they call homo sapiens, which is you know, the term they use. Um, I didn't really explain that term exactly, but the term um, homo Homo sapiens uh, either means wise man or thinking man, usually. Uh, and um, they do think that Neanderthal men were, were you know, man was, you know, some, somewhat intelligent. Um, I, I know for a long time they thought they didn't have any language, but I think they do now. Of course, they can mean also thinking man as well. But they have what they call modern humans. Modern humans are usually classified as Homo sapiens sapiens. Usually spelled out, I guess, out like that, uh, usually. And um, so wise, I guess it means wise, wise human or man, uh, would it be translated. And the earliest type of um, human that really emerges to kind of take control and really take over most of the world uh, later would be the Cro-Magnum man or Cro-Magnum type culture, uh, which started in Europe. Uh, the Cro-Magnum man, which I do have a skull of, which is right here, uh, they were um, supposedly more intelligent. Uh, they were also, the early ones were also hunter-gatherers uh, as well. But they flourished in parts of Europe and Asia, and then, all, and of course, also Africa. I think they theorized they started in Africa. They spread to the rest of the world. And over time, they think they may have wiped out the Neanderthals. Uh, although there's a theory that Neanderthals and Cro-Magnum type humans, later humans, may have interbreeded. Because I think there's some theories that humans today still have some Neanderthal DNA in them. So we might be Neanderthals still. You know, <laughs> maybe I am. I don't know. But uh, anyway, um, so Cro-Magnum men, um, they, they, they kind of appear about 50,000 years, 50 to 30,000 years ago. That's usually the time period of when probably when they first appear uh, overall. Uh, and um, they were known for living in caves a lot. I don't know if you know much about this, but there's been a bunch of caves that have been found, uh, like in mostly like in Europe, like in France. There's two big ones. They have a, a Sco cave. I know they was one of them. Also, there's another cave, of course, where they get the name uh, from, um, which is uh, Cro Magnum Cave and Lesco. So the, I think Cro Magnum supposedly was the first cave, which was in France, where they first found these 
humans in the 1800s. And Lascaux is another cave uh, that was famous. Uh, and um, one thing that they were known for, uh, if you know much about early humans, was like cave art. They loved to do cave art. Uh, and so you may have seen paintings like this before on you know walls. And so, yeah, humans are starting to become artistic, um, you know, as a culture. Uh, but obviously, you can see their main uh, form of culture is really hunting, you know, you know to survive. Because uh, they have, like, a very nomadic lifestyle, which I'll explain later, which has a lot to do with, like, because of the um, ice age that the Earth was in at the time. So we're kind of talking about early humans and um, their development uh, at that time. And uh, so, yeah, that's kind of like the kind of humans that would develop it. Yeah, about 10 to 15,000 BC, you know, you've got like these, you know, Homo sapiens sapiens moving into, like I said, to the Americas, I think, and eventually settling there uh, also as well. Now, um, let me go back, of course, to this other slide. And uh, we do need to talk about uh, the cultural stages of human development. We haven't really got into that uh, as well. So I need to mention about that as well. Uh, of course, uh, if you know much about early human development, they kind of develop in different cultural stages. The two main areas or periods they, they, that humans develop in are the Stone Age and the Metal Ages. You got these two periods uh, that humans develop in uh, as a whole. Uh, of course, I'll get to it later, but the Stone Age is broken down, as you see there, and they do break down the Middle Ages as well. Uh, of course, the main ones that I'll explain mostly about is the Paleolithic Age or Old Stone Age, Neolithic Age, and you got your Metal Ages like bronze and iron. Um, now, the oldest you can see is the Paleolithic Age. Uh, Paleolithic uh, also means um, old stone. So I'll kind of put that there up there for you. And um, they think the system of using these names developed in the 1800s. And of course, this is the oldest period of the Stone Age, which you can see goes back two and a half million years ago. So it's one of the longest periods of the Stone Age. Of course, it's called the Stone Age because, you know, it's mostly what humans are using as technology like tools and weapons, is stone, like hand stone axe or spears with, with probably, you know, tips on them. And um, so, so the payoff gauge, um, if you study much about it, one thing it's uh, dominant with, as you can see there, is that humans rely a lot on hunting. So hunting, you know, gathering food, um, that's pretty much the main uh, culture of human survivability. Uh, and I told you because the earth was in an ice age, uh, humans had to find a way to get food. And so nomadically, they had to follow whatever animals were out there that they could hunt, deer, bassadon, whatever was back in those days. Uh, and so a lot of them, that's why they lived in kind of small clans, maybe 30 to 50 people at the most, if even that. And so a lot of times they had to live in caves. If they didn't, they maybe lived in huts possibly also as well and so that's why humans like moved all over the place and probably ended up throughout all the world trying to you know hunt animals uh, and so on uh then they have this kind of a transitionary period that kind of comes in later uh which um it's often called the mesolithic age or or uh, yeah yeah it means a Middle, really middle stone is what it really means. Again, that's, that's really not right. It really means middle stone uh, is what, um, you have the middle ages, which is different. So, so kind of like the middle stone age is what it really would be. And um, this is a period basically um, where there was a transitional period. What's going on is that humans, uh, on the earth or transitioning. They're going from basically, uh, they're kind of moving toward uh, like farming. You know, they're 
they're probably doing they're probably doing both. You know, I think in some places where you know they're hunting and they're farming uh, together, and then um, over time they start going more towards farming and may they might hunt here and there, but uh, farming becomes eventually the culture that'll replace what humans are doing to survive as a culture. Uh, and um, this happened over thousands of years, kind of at the end of the old stone age. And they think at the beginning of the new stone age, humans were kind of doing that. Now, why did this happen? Well, they believe this occurred uh, because of the um, ice age, if you know much about it, uh, began began to uh, end. It began to uh, basically recede uh, throughout the world. Uh, they do think that the last glacial period ended about 10 to 14,000 BC. So it'd make it about 12 to 16,000 years ago. It's when the main ice age began to end. Uh, and so that allowed humans to basically begin farming uh, throughout the world. So they probably took grain crops like barley and wheat and things like that. They started, you know, growing crops. They do think that this happened around what they call the solid, uh, Holocene Epoch. I mean, you've heard about this Holocene Epoch. Holocene Epoch started about 11,000 BC, about 13,000 years ago. And that basically is the current geological time that the Earth is in right now. Uh, and I think the one before that was the Pleistocene, it's called, which is when most of the Stone Age was in. And uh, so uh, they think most of um, the Earth was starting to warm up uh, at that point. So it's a warmer period uh, in the Earth's history. And so that allowed humans to begin farming overall. So um, what then came in is in, you then had this new period that followed the Paleo and Mesolithic periods, uh, which is called the Neolithic Age, also called a uh, New Stone Age, uh, that they dubbed it. Uh, it's a very short period. You can see it's only 10 to 3,000 B.C., uh, that humans basically are in this period. Uh, and um, during this time, humans are, you know, they're still hunting a little bit, but they're mostly farming is one of the things that's going on. And so there's this um, Neolithic revolution, they dub it, that occurs uh, into like farming practices. We call uh, the fancy word, as you know, is the word agriculture, agriculture. Uh, and so humans start settling down, they start growing crops, uh, they start domesticating animals, we call animal husbandry, all of that. Uh, you start to see urbanization, you start to see uh, development of like language and new kinds of customs and culture, um, pottery is being used. Um, so all kinds of practices, you know, are new or starting to kind of take off, but farming, you know, is the big key thing, because that's the big thing they think. That, of course, you know, overall, you know, led to what we call, you know, civilization uh, in the end. So without farming, you know, you wouldn't have had civilization sprout up uh, and all that. People take that for granted, you know, agriculture, production of farming and all that. Uh, my uncle for years was a farmer, you know, growing soybeans, uh, wheat, uh, and um, like my old, my, my mother, my mother's side of the family were mostly farmers. That's how they made their living uh, anyway. So it's very important still today, you know, agriculture um, overall. So, yes, yeah, so that's how I got started with, you know, all these, you know, of different you know sites being sprouting up everywhere people starting to farm and urbanize forming villages i did want to go ahead and also talk about examples of some of these um early neolithic sites uh that are kind of famous like some of the oldest ones that that kind of appear first so i'll go ahead and talk about these a little bit let me go ahead and switch to that other slide i've got 
that I could bring, because I've got a lot of other pictures I can show you that are not in the PowerPoint, which um, I could bring up. Of course, one of the first uh, that they always talk about um, is um, the Neolithic site of ancient Jericho. It has different names. Um, one of the common names that they'll often call it is Tel S. Sultan. Write that on there so you can get the spelling of it uh, for you. And um, yeah, Tel S. Sultan, ancient Jericho, uh, which it's kind of a picture of it, what they think it looked like. It did have its famous walls, as you probably heard of the walls of Jericho, which are in the Bible mentioned. So I think the walls of Jericho might be about 10,000 years old. Uh, where is ancient Jericho located? Uh, it's located in the West Bank, which would be like Palestine, next to where Israel is. And um, it's, they've known about it for years. It's one of the, of course, it's the oldest, you know, Neolithic site. It might date back to 12,000 years ago uh, overall. And uh, Jericho is a small site. It's not that big. I think like 10 acres in size. Very few people live there. Maybe two to 3,000 people live there. So it was a small village, really, more than anything. And they do think it started out as a, um, started out as a hunter-gatherer site, believe it or not, for humans like would hunt from there. And then over time, they switched to agriculture um, overall. Uh, and uh, so that's basically, you know, how it got started uh, as a as a Neolithic village. Um, I did. Oh, I had another picture of it too. I think you want to see as well, like some ruins of it. Picture here. I don't know. That's part of the actual walls, uh, but just they have, they have ruins of it that are there. I guess parts of the wall are still there, you know, today. Uh, and so, but like I said, it is the oldest Neolithic site, you know, out of all of them. Period. They have another site too. I'll show you as well. Uh, that one, of course, you see there. Is called Katal Huyug. I'll write where it is so you'll know. And Katal Huyug is located in what is um, modern Turkey. Yeah, Katal Huyug. I spelled Turkey wrong. Oops, that's okay. Uh, but um, T U, little U, excuse me. But um, so modern Turkey, which is Asia Minor or basically in Western Asia, Southwestern Asia. And uh, Katal Huyuk is a, is a um, not quite as old as, as Jericho is. It's about 10,000 years old, I believe. And uh, that particular site uh, is a site located in uh, southern Turkey. And it's a famous uh, village, which uh, the name means in Turkish, it means fork mound. The fork mound. Uh, a lot of your Early Neolithic sites were built on mounds or what they call a tell. And Katal Huyuk is a type of um, a Neolithic site that was found in the 1960s. It's um, actually, I think, in yeah, what would be, I think it's in southern Turkey, I believe. I want to say close to Iraq, I believe. And uh, it's pretty large in size, about 30 acres in size. And um, one thing it's famous for, Katal Uyu, as you can see, is it's, um, it's famous for its um, mud huts. They had a mud brick. And um, they would actually uh, put doors in the roof. They'd have to climb down through the roof. I think there's even a theory that they painted the walls, you know, some kind of paintings or frescoes or something like that that they know of and uh but a lot of your early culture especially throughout the middle east used mud brick that was quite common uh because there was like a shortage of stone i guess they could use and so that's what they build their houses or dwellings out of so katal huyuk like i said is one of the largest sites i think they've ever found uh maybe up to ten thousand people may have lived there at one point. So that's kind of an interesting one. Uh, there's one that's really weird. I'll show you uh, that's well known, of course, that people have kind of studied about a lot. And that one is uh, called Gopekli, Gopekli Tepe. 
That one's also uh, in modern Turkey as well. Let me spell it on there for you. Gopekli Tepe. Gopekli Tepe is a um, Neolithic site that's in southern Turkey near the Syrian border. And uh, it was found also in the 1960s. Uh, the name uh, means, uh, I'll put it up here for you, but it means uh, Pot Belly Hill is what it means in Turkish. Pot Belly Hill. And it's called because of the shape of the hill. Like you see the shape up there at the top. I think it's about 50, 60 feet high, the hill maybe. So it has a pot belly shape to it. Uh, the Turks kind of called it that later. And um, if you know much about this site, it was a site which was not really a city. It was actually a holy site uh, that was used, uh, they think, for animal sacrifices, as far as they know. Because yeah, uh, archaeologists have found uh, a lot of um, animal bones scattered everywhere, buried nearby. So they may have sacrificed animals, which may have been like gods, they think. They think they may have worshipped gods, possibly. And um, they think that this whole Gopakli Tepe may have been some kind of temple of some type. Because it's famous for having a lot of um, huge columns that were around it, uh, which you can see there. And some of these columns were like megaliths. They weighed like 20 tons. Uh, which was like 40,000 pounds. So it's amazing how they were able to move this, these, these stones, kind of like stone hinge and all of that. And um, so it was a site evidently that was abandoned. And they do think it's pretty old. They think that Gopekli Tepe might be, I think they believe it's about, I want to say 10,000 BC, uh, may have been um, when it was actually built. So it, it, it might, it, they think it's as old as Jericho. Both Jericho and, and you know, Gopakli Tepe might be the two oldest, you know, Neolithic sites. And there's other sites too. I'm just kind of, those are, I think those three are, I think the oldest they have, at least in decent size. Uh, and um, Gopakli Tepe is about 20 acres in size. So it's a little smaller than Katal Huyuk. So anyway, it's kind of, you know, going through um, all these different Neolithic sites. But over time, you know, humans are going to start moving uh, to more urbanized areas uh, overall. And, um, of course, the big thing that happens later with, you know, humans, if you know much about it, is that humans then develop these major civilizations uh, that are called the River Valley civilizations, which... Um, I want to go ahead and talk about a little bit, just a few minutes on that. Uh, after that, I'm going to talk about the study guide. I'm going to review that real quick. And we'll take some questions from you, from the audience. And um, let me go ahead and show you um, like the four, the four, actually, if you go to the other slide I've got, let me pull it up real quick here for you. And this slide, uh, I think it has you all, all of them. Uh, which are right here. So the four, the four so-called river valley civilizations, they're all called that because all these civilizations develop near water or rivers, like fresh water, so that they could grow crops, which was very important. And so you got Mesopotamia, uh, which is right here. Um, that one, of course, is the oldest overall. Uh, and um, it's often called the Tigris Euphrates River Valley Civilizations. They do think it's the oldest, dating back 10,000 years or more as a whole. A lot of people call it Iraq, uh, but of course the Greeks called it Mesopotamia. Uh, then you got India, which is often part of the Indus Ganges River Valley Civilizations. It's the second oldest. It's located in southern Asia, in India mostly, around India. Then you've got China, which is part of the Yellow River Valley Civilization, um, also called the Wang Ho, which I'll explain later. It's called, people call it that. Uh, and then, of course, you've got Egypt, uh, where the Nile River at, is in Egypt, modern Egypt, and, of course, North Africa. So Mesopotamia, India, China, Egypt, uh, of course, Mesopotamia, also called Iraq. Uh, so that's the names that they usually call it. 
I do have a, uh, another map I can show you uh, that'll show you like where they are. So you'll just know where they are. I, mean, I kind of add, but uh, yeah, you can see how um, Egypt's over here, like where the Nile River, so Northeastern Africa, kind of between the Red Sea over here and Libya, which is over there. Uh, Iraq or Mesopotamia is right here. Uh, you got, of course, uh, India over here, and of course, China over here. Uh, don't forget that they all have different, you know, river valleys uh, that they have. Um, we'll be getting more into Mesopotamia. Like Mesopotamia's got two, uh, which are, you know, in, uh, the um, Tigris and the Euphrates. India's got two, uh, which are the Indus and Ganges. Um, China's got the yellow, and of course, Egypt's got the Nile. So, well, of course, uh, next week we'll be talking about Mesopotamia first. That'll be the first thing we'll really get into. Uh, and but I'll have an announcement later about, you know, review uh, talking about that later. But let me go ahead and um, I can review the study guide real quick. I'm sure you want me to do that and go through kind of what we reviewed today, of course, on um, what we call, you know, the prehistory period. Of course, I didn't put in there uh, anything uh, about um, I didn't put anything there about you know the, what is history. That's kind of like in that pretest one. And I think I asked some questions in there about that. I know about it, but uh, of course, what is history? Well, excuse me. What is prehistory? Prehistory is the period before civilization, before they had you know written records. I told you it starts about 3000 BC. Anything before that is called prehistoric times. Stone Age, of course, is, of course, the main period where humans, you know, develop. Um, you know, which the Pale of Gates, you know, of course, is the oldest that we talked about. What are examples of early humans or hominids that developed in Africa? They went into Asia and Europe and Americas. I uh, told you the oldest was Australopithecus or Lucy, which was, of course, one of the nicknames for the first one that was found. Homo habilis was another one, of course, we had as well. Uh, then we talked about Homo erectus, uh, who became the first real um, hunter-gatherer uh, who left Africa and went to Europe and Asia. Uh, then like, Trichonoboy, you know. And then we uh, talked about um, Homo sapiens, like Neanderthal man or Homo Neanderthal man, who um, I told you was another big hunt, hunter gatherer in Europe and Southwest Asia. He went eventually went extinct, they think. And then the Homo sapiens sapiens, like Cro Magnum man, which was one of the first cultures of that, was like what we call modern man, um, you know, so called thinking man or wise man, uh, basically. And um, so from pretty much from, you know, um, Homo erectus, you know, to the present, all the humans, you know, were bipedal, you know, that you have. Um, what two uh, major cultural stages man developed in, of course, around up to 580 or CE? Yeah, you have the Stone Age, the oldest, and you got your Metal Ages. Uh, that's, so it's broken down to the, those two main periods uh, overall. Um, sub periods, uh, they have. I, I didn't get in the Metal Ages. I forgot about that. We skipped it, didn't we? For some reason, we didn't do the. I could do the Metal Ages real quick, but the uh, Stone Age, of course, the main ones uh, you had uh, was the um, Old Stone Age or Paleolithic Age. Then you got the Mesolithic Age, Middle Stone Age, and then you got the New or Neolithic Stone Age. I don't think we did. We kind of mentioned the Metal Ages. I don't remember doing them. For, did we do them? I forgot if we did them or not. Uh, but remember, the Metal Ages are really three. Uh, you've got the Copper Age. Uh, you've got the Bronze Age. And you have the Metal Ages. A lot of, a lot, I mean, excuse me, the, the Iron Ages. Well, we'll only be talking about those later, especially the Bronze Age. So you got the Copper Age, the Bronze Age. And of course, you got the Iron Ages. Copper Age starts really during the end of the Stone Age. It goes from 
like 5,000 to 3,000 BC. Some people do call the Copper Age. Uh, I'll put the other name if you want. Um, some people call it the Chocolithic Age. That's a that's kind of a nickname. Uh, they sometimes call it the Copper Age. Yeah, the, the Chocolithic Age. Choc uh, that should be Chaco. I just realized it. Just spelled wrong. Let me spell that right for you. It probably doesn't understand that anyway. Uh, the spelling, but Chocolithic. Uh, Chaco means uh, copper in Greek, lithic meaning stone, so copper stone age. And so early humans did kind of experiment with copper at the end of the stone age. And they kind of went to, you know, using bronze, but they still use, you know, stone overall. Um, and of course, I'll tell you about the, the, the bronze age. Bronze age starts about 3000 BC and it goes down to 12, 1200 BC. Bronze is usually composed of two elements, uh, which are uh, basically copper and tin. That's basically in it. And um, mostly bronze is 80% copper and 20% tin. So it's very important you have the tin or it won't be as strong. Uh, and so a lot of civilizations like the Egyptians, Sumerians, were some of the first to use you know, bronze type tools. And believe it or not, they built the pyramids mostly with stone and bronze type implements, which is really amazing, you know. Um, oh, and then the Iron Age. The Iron Age is like, um, it goes from like 1200 BC to about 500 CE. It's almost 2000 years. And uh, the peak civilization of the Iron Age was the Roman Empire, if you know much about it. So they were one of the ones at the end of it. And then from there, you know, you have other periods in history, like the Middle Ages follow uh, and so on. All right, let me finish up the study guide real quick here. And uh, yeah, what type of culture does man rely on to survive during the Paleolithic Age? I told you already about this in the Old Stone Age, hunting and gathering. So humans were a hunter-gatherer because of the cold climate at the time. And so that, that's, that was how they survived uh, nomadically. Uh, what type of climate declined during the Mesolithic Age, Middle Stone Age? Uh, of course, the Ice Age began to recede, uh, and um, humans began to move towards farming overall. We talked about that already, so just kind of reviewing it. And then, um, of course, current e uh, geological epoch, uh, epoch is, of course, the Holocene Epoch. I think that's a typo down there, uh, but that should be. Uh, roughly 11 to 12,000 BC is when it started, they think, which would put an extra 2,000 years in there. So, so roughly 13 to 15,000 years ago is when it really started. That's really a typo right there. Uh, and then, of course, a few others real quick. Uh, but uh, Neolithic Revolution was that. That's where humans began to, to farm, you know, agriculture. And they think agriculture is what led to civilization during the New Stone Age, Neolithic period. Uh, so without, without farming, like I said, you wouldn't have had civilized culture that followed throughout the world, like the River Valley civilizations. But it's all because of the Ice Age, you know, ending and the earth warming up. Uh, where are some ancient Neolithic sites that, that show evidence of early farming civilization, where are they located? Uh, I gave you three examples, Jericho, Tel Es Sultan, of course, which is in, Palestine and the West Bank. That one is considered one of the oldest overall. Uh, Gobekli Tepe is also just as old as Jericho, uh, dating back to around 10,000 BC, uh, but it's more of a Neolithic site that's located in modern Turkey. Then the other one is Katal Huyuk, uh, also in southern Turkey. Uh, that's the one that meant Fork Mound, remember? And uh, that one is not as old as the other two, maybe 8,000 BC at the oldest. That's the one that was famous for the mud huts with the doors and the roof and all that. So, and of course, the Copacli Tepe was more of a holy site. Yeah, so it's not really a city, Copacli Tepe. Uh, and then the four river valley civilizations and their rivers. Remember, Mesopotamia, Iraq is the oldest, which has got the Tigris, Euphrates rivers. Uh, two, you've got India, second oldest. It's got two rivers, Indus, Ganges rivers. You've got the Yellow River 
in China, uh, which is sometimes called the Wang Ho. I'll kind of spell that later for you if you want when we get to China. And then um, the last one, of course, Egypt uh, of the Nile. You know, for years they thought uh, that Egypt was one of the oldest um, of the civilizations, like older than any other civilization uh, at the time. Uh, but now they think because of archaeology, they, they, they figured out that Mesopotamia and some of these other ones are actually older. So, but Egypt was one of the gr first great civilizations. You know, they built the pyramids and all that, you know, uh, and so that's what they're known for later. But anyway, um, so uh, let me go ahead and uh, is there any questions about anything or comments you want to add right now? Anybody? Um, wait, unmute your mic here. Miranda or Laura, any, any questions y'all got right now? Huh? Now, I want to use headphones next time, like plug headphones in. You can, like earbuds, because it creates echoing. So that's, that's the only problem with that. I think that's what's your problem, why you're echoing. Oh, that's why you're echoing? You're, oh, you're having echoing problems? Yeah, you don't use headphones. Use headphones. Yes. Uh, Lauren's got a question for the book review. Oh, Miranda, if you want to send me a uh, text, you can. Just send me a chat. Send me a chat. But um, Lauren's got a question for the book review. Uh, can you use random parts of the book? Yeah, it's like echoing is what it is. Yeah, that's the only thing about that Zoom and all that, all the echoing. But just send me a question if you can, like through the chat, uh, if you can. But, uh, yeah, uh, Lauren, um, I think you're going to have to read like a third of it. So as long as it's a third of the book, you know, you can, I guess, pick random parts of it. Not sure which book. I forget which book you have because I just signed you up. I know. I have to look at the list. I forgot already. But, um, you know, um, you can like figure out like a third of it. You know, like say it's got nine chapters. Okay, meditations. Well, I guess figure out how many pages it is, chapters and all that. You know, if it has chapters, I don't know if meditation does, I forget if it does or not. And, um, hey, Aaron, uh, but anyway, um, if Aaron, you got a question, let me know, Aaron, coming in. But, um, well, yeah, you can either, um, you have a question about anything, Aaron? No, I just had gotten booted out for a few seconds. I don't know. I must have clicked on something and made me exit out, but I'm good. Yeah, yeah. If you probably just delete yourself from the stream, that's what happened. Okay, that's fine. Um, but yeah, just try to figure out if it's got a hundred, I guess, I guess it's got 120 pages, you know, a uh, third of it would be then 40 pages, you know, is what it would be. So anyway, so I don't think it's that long meditations, you know, so I've read it years ago, but anyway, um, now don't forget, uh, if you have any uh, questions about the, um, lecture, uh, let me know, uh, you can comment on my YouTube channel. Um, remember, you can send questions or comments to me through YouTube, which you do get bonus points for. Don't forget that. Uh, I think I may have talked about that already. Uh, and then um, let me also remind you, too, don't forget, like I said, the few things I already talked about earlier. Um, don't forget about turning in the student contract policy page. to me. Just email that to me. Um, so just get that to me as soon as you can, at least by this week and next. Pre-test never expires Friday. Uh, don't forget about that. Uh, book report sign up. We've, of course, been talking a lot about that. You know, send me whatever book you want to do. Um, and then also, if you're interested in the oral history project, you know, email me. Let me know uh, about that. Okay. So I don't think I have anything else to talk about. Uh, I will tell you that next week, probably Monday, I will have a um, some kind of Canvas quiz coming up about uh, prehistory. So I'm gonna give you a quiz about it. Um, so make sure you study over this lecture, look over whatever kind of notes you've taken. But yeah, that study guide section, I've kind of helped you out already and you know answered those. So I hope you've paid attention to that. 
and all that. But next week, uh, be thinking about Mesopotamia, like what that is. Uh, I guess look up um, uh, something about the Sumerians. So it's like, what is, who are the Sumerians? Who are they? And all that. What is Mesopotamia, ancient Mesopotamia? Uh, so look up, look up that. So we'll be talking about that, uh, of course, on Monday's class. But I will send out announcements. Yeah, I don't have anything for that yet. Uh, you know, put in Canvas, but I'm probably going to do that over the weekend and let you know via announcements and emails. So y'all take care. Uh, like I said, if you have any comments, questions, you know, shoot it to my um, YouTube account or email me at simond at mybrcc.edu. So, so y'all, see y'all later. Uh, hope y'all have a great day. Okay, that's it. So bye.